just about any computer has some sort of component developed by Intel. They seem to be everywhere and have that iconic sound logo. But how did they start? Who were the geniuses behind Intel? Let's find out on Feed My Curiosity. Intel is one of the most well-known brands in the computer industry. Almost any computer in the world has a component developed by Intel. Whether it's the central processing unit, the network interface controller, the motherboard, or the integrated graphics card. The thing about Intel is that they didn't really start off as a manufacturer for personal computers. So what was their early history like? Who were the brains behind Intel? What were their early products? Let's find out today on Feed My Curiosity. If you're liking what you're watching so far, don't forget to help us grow by by liking the video and subscribing to our channel. When you uh, look at one of these devices under a microscope, what you're seeing really, you could compare it to the cells of our brain, for instance. You see the little memory cells, and in this case, there's 64,000 of them packed on this little tiny chip of silicon. Intel was born in Mountain View, California in 1968. Its founders are Gordon E. Moore and Robert Noyce. Gordon E. Moore was a chemist and the author behind Moore's Law, which explains that, since the inception of the integrated circuit, the number of transistors per square inch on integrated circuits doubles every year. Robert Noyce, who was Moore's colleague from Fairchild Semiconductor, was a physicist and the co-founder of the integrated circuit. So you tried, wanted to get a thousand transistors together. Well, you didn't even think about it, because it just wouldn't work. The other thing was that the early, early uh, integrated circuits were still very slow. We were using simple logic forms, saturating logic, and they were indeed slow. As a matter of fact, if we look at that last picture, the, one of the first of the DCTL logic chips is that one in the upper right-hand corner. Arthur Rock, who was an investor and chairman of the board, joined afterwards. He helped secure a $2.5 million investment for the company. How did Intel get its name? Well, when Moore and Noyce started off the company, the initial name they gave it was NM Electronics. Moore Noyce was among the suggested names, but they refused to use it. Moore Noyce sounds like more noise, which is actually bad in the world of electronics, as noise in electronics means interference. So NM Electronics sufficed for the first month until they changed it to Intel, which is short for Integrated Electronics. Unfortunately, it was already owned by Intel Co., a hotel chain, so they had to purchase the naming rights. The Intel team saw itself grow with the addition of Andrew S. Grove, Marcian E. Ted Hoff, Frederico Fagan, and Stan Mazur. Andrew S. Grove was specifically known as a pioneer in the semiconductor industry and had a role in the development of the metal oxide semiconductor. Among their first products was the 3101 Skotsky Bipolar 64-bit Static Random Access Memory and the 1101, which made use of Intel's Silicon Gate Metal Oxide Semiconductor Process. They're in little toys that kids play with, they're in dishwashers, they're in ovens, they're in calculators obviously in computers and telephones. They're everywhere because they're useful, they're doing things. Chips are everywhere because they give machines the ability to perform repetitive mechanical tasks perfectly. They do the drudgery, freeing us to use our imagination. Yet because they are so inexpensive, they are bringing the benefits of advanced computer technology to everyone. They had also developed the EPROM, which was able to store data until it was zapped by ultraviolet light. Intel's turning point, and perhaps the turning point of the computer industry, came when they were tasked by a Japanese calculator manufacturer named Busicom to develop a set of 12 custom chips. The result of that work became the Intel 4004, a 4-bit processor which was the world's first microprocessor and the world's first commercially available processor. It contained 2300 metal oxide semiconductor transistors, and the best part was that it was a single CPU unit that was able to perform the work of 12 chips. The Intel 4004 was used in Busicom's 141PF calculator, 
The Intel 4004 was the first of many microprocessors to be developed by Intel, with the Intel 4040 and the first 8-bit processor, the Intel 8008, to follow. Intel also developed the first microcomputers, which was the Intellix series, and they made use of the early Intel microprocessors as well. Since personal computers became very successful and integrated themselves into nearly every household and workplace, the development of microprocessors became Intel's primary focus. Today, nearly every device requires the best microprocessors to help users accomplish many tasks at once, and Intel is among the world leaders in developing them. The recently announced Comet Lake H 10th generation mobile processors are known to be the fastest Intel processor to date, offering up to 8 cores, 16 threads, and a base clock of roughly 2.3 GHz, which can turbo all the way up to as high as 5.3 GHz. Compared to the Intel 4004, which just had one core, one thread, and a speed of 400 kHz, it may not be able to run Fortnite or help you produce your next YouTube video, but it helped pave the way for microprocessor and computer development for years to come. If you liked our video, don't forget to show your appreciation by tapping the subscribe and thumbs up buttons. Until next time, thank you for joining us on Feed My Curiosity.